Hi guys and welcome to this this YouTube channel and this video which is going to be the first video ever on this channel and the channel is going to be about magic and especially card magic and I was thinking that I want to start off this channel by going through this book The Royal Road to Card Magic you might have heard about it uh, it's a classic it's a book which a lot of people are saying it's the it's the the best book to start your your road to card magic your royal road to card magic it's it's a great book for beginners a great place to, to to start so my my thought is to go through this book on this channel with a series of uh, videos and we're going to talk a little bit about this book i think it was published in 1947 so it's quite old but it's still as i said great way to start because it's it's very good for beginners it's a step-by-step -step course uh, which progress and it will give you a very strong foundation so by going through this book doing it in your own time and your own pace you will have a very strong foundation to build upon and by learning this book and all the slides you're going to be better than you know 99% of people who who ever dabbled with cards because most people they just you know they learn a little bit here a little bit there and they have a quite scattered uh, repertoire of card slides but here you will you will have a very structured a very structured course so you will have all all the all the tools you need to to make great magic so we're going to go through this book i'm going to, to do almost at least all the slides and most of the flourishes and some of the best tricks in it but i want to tell you that i'm not a professional magician or anything i'm just a hobbyist probably like yourself but i think i have some some things to to bring to the table which you can benefit from hopefully you can benefit from it and i i i want this to be more of a interactive kind of thing where i just you know see me as a friend who shares my ideas like we're sitting together and just you know sharing ideas going through this book together so comment in the in the comment section what you think your ideas and uh, what you like about it so we can learn from each other okay so i just want to go through a couple of things in this book which we're going to, to do let's start out by looking at the contents so today we're going to talk about the overhand shuffle and i'm going to teach you a lot about that going on we'll talk about the ripple shuffle which is on the table or in the air probably seen it the casino styles of shuffling on the on the table some flourishes you know some some uh, some nice things to do to just make make your card magic a little bit more attractive to the eye so to speak the glide we're going to talk about the glide which is a very underused slide in my opinion nowadays the glimpse glimpse in cards like a selection secretly so you know which card it is so it can be very useful the key card using another known card to locate the uh, the selection palm secretly palming cards in your hand we're going to continue with the overhand shuffle and other false shuffles and cuts double lifts turnover which is yeah it's a great slide but sometimes it's a bit overused in my opinion there are great alternatives such as as the glide uh the pass uh, it's a classic classic move you can have um, a card which is in the middle of the deck go to the top like this so yeah it's useful uh yeah some flourishes again reverses reversing a card secret secretly hindu shuffling forcing classic force top and bottom changes also great moves also a little bit underused nowadays actually a top change is a great alternative to to double lifts in many tricks yeah and a little bit of routining and as i said i'm going to pick some of the tricks which i think is best and go through them in later videos okay so that's a little bit of the contents what we're going to go through on the channel and i wanted to also go through some things which are talked about here in the introduction and the preface yeah they write that student that came before this book <laughs> should be a bit jealous because now there's such a great and 
easy way to learn card magic and this was in 1947 so i guess they can be a little bit jealous about us now because we have a video and we're gonna go through this on this channel uh, step by step and the great thing about this book is it's it's tricks it's card it's card tricks which can be performed everywhere with a normal deck of cards so there will be no like trick packs or cards special cards gaffs you know which i think is great and also they're talking about the, f the fundamentals here the foundations which is so important and you'll definitely get that by by following this book and by the way, I strongly recommend you to buy this book, to buy it and read it as we go through it. Because obviously I can tell you how to do the slides, most of them, but there are so much more information in these pages about pattern, routining, small stuff that I won't have the time or which I will miss that you can read for yourself if you got the book. So combination, reading and watching these videos will be the best, I'm sure about that. And they also talk about here about the difference between doing and performing card tricks. I have been in this trap many times, the trap of learning so many card tricks and do them half well, instead of just learning a few really strong card tricks and really working on the presentation. Actually, the card tricks in themselves doesn't need to be that strong, as long as your presentation is entertaining so that is very important and we'll probably get back to that uh, later as well yeah that's a little bit about this book uh, so as I said please buy the book because it's it's very very good and and uh, it's so much better to have the book and the videos uh, than just one of them and uh, I'm gonna put a link underneath where you can buy the book okay guys enough talking Let's get into the overhand shuffle, the fun stuff now. I'm gonna have the book here to so that I, I don't forget anything. They say in the introduction to the overhand shuffle, they give a little word of caution and they remind you that it's better to go through these slides slowly and learn them instead of just rushing, going to the next slide, the next trick, and, and just know all of these slides, you know, half good instead of really learning them and imprinting it into the, the, the muscle memory. And remember, this is the foundations. The more time you put into the foundations, the easier it will be to learn more advanced card tricks in the future and card slides in the future. Okay, the Ovan Shuffle. The Ovan Shuffle, you've probably all seen it at some point, or you probably shuffle cards like this before. The Ovan Shuffle looks like this. It's, it's not more advanced than this. Um, And we're gonna go through how to do that but before before we do that I just want to say don't be fooled by how easy this looks or how easy it's done this is a very powerful and very uh, diverse move because you can do so much with O and shuffle and it's great you can do it sitting down you can do it standing up you don't need a table to do the O and shuffle which is great. With the Ovan Shuffle, you can control the top card, you can control the bottom card, you can control the top and the bottom card, and you can control the top stock. And we're gonna do that today. You can control, we're gonna, we're gonna go through those, those things today. But also you can control the top and the bottom stock. You can even control the entire deck. And we're going to do that today too, a completely false shuffle. You can even stack the deck with the Urban Shuffle. So for example, if you have the four aces, you can put three cards in between uh, those aces. And if you deal like a poker hand, the fourth person will get the aces. So much can be done with, with the Urban Shuffle. Okay, now, how do we do the Urban Shuffle? You probably, maybe you've already done it. Maybe you have this kind of shuffle, for example. Uh, or, or maybe it looks like this when you do it. But we're going to go through the, the proper handling today. If we begin by having the, the deck in the mechanics grip or the dealer's grip, knowing this grip is also very important. You hold the deck like this with your index finger up here, 
these three fingers on this side and your thumb over here and you don't you don't for example you don't hold it like this or like this you hold it quite loosely like this with some space underneath okay the cards here are a little bit beveled you can have your thumb here or like this that doesn't matter but from here you're gonna grab it with your right hand and you're gonna put it like this 45 degree angle about 45 degree angle and the grip for the oven shuffle is this so you have your your right uh, your left index finger here and this is your right handed if you're left handed you hold the pack in your right hand uh, but if you're right handed like me you hold it in your left hand you have your uh, index finger over here at this edge very important and your pinky finger here at this edge also very important in the future and these two fingers are loosely at the at the yeah this this end of the of the deck and your thumb on top and what you're gonna do basically is just you're gonna lift it and using your right uh, your, your left thumb to uh, to just pull up packs small packets like this about 10 cards five cards you know just like this and these these two fingers the index finger and the pink finger they will come in later but already now it's very good to have them there because it keeps the deck in in control yeah so this is what it looks like and it's, it's quite easy to do <clears throat> you pull cards with your thumb like this the the right hand is also quite important so you you grab the deck with your thumb at this end your long finger and ring finger here and the index finger is here on the on this edge when you pull the cards you can also kind of drop the cards from this hand simultaneously so yeah it's it's both the the left hand which is pulling up the cards and the right hand which is dropping the cards yeah so that's the overhand shuffle next we're going to learn how to control the top card and it's quite easy what you do is you start your overhand shuffle by pulling off the top card like this then you shuffle off which is which means that you shuffle the rest of the deck so now the top card is is on the bottom and then you shuffle again shuffle off but you run the last cards which means pulling them off individually so that you make sure that card which was on the bottom recently is now back to the top so i'm going to turn the top card over it's the ace of spades so we run that individually and we keep shuffling shuffling off we can give it a little tap which we do in in all the shuffles not just when controlling the top card and then we do the second shuffle and we make sure to run the last cards which means again to shuffle them individually so what 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 we essentially done is shuffling the top card to the bottom and then back to the top and in, in you know usual speed it's something like this so it's quite easy actually now let's control the bottom card and that's also very easy it's one of the easiest slides you'll ever encounter we're going to undercut the deck so we're going to cut uh, about half the the deck like this and we're gonna shuffle but we're gonna apply a little, we're going to apply a little bit of pressure with these two fingers like this so we're gonna apply a little bit of pressure on this card with these two fingers as to keep that card on the bottom like this 
So that card is still there, and then we shuffle off. And the card is still there, we can give it uh, a second shuffle, of course. Again, keeping that card on the bottom. Okay, let's learn how to control the top and the bottom cards at the same time. So we're going to place the Ace of uh, Spades on top and the Ace of Hearts on the bottom. And the shuffle looks like this. So we have the Ace of Hearts on the bottom and the Ace of uh, Spades on top. And what we're going to do is we're basically going to combine what we've learned so far. So we're going to apply a little bit of pressure to the back of the deck, to the bottom card, with these two fingers of the left hand, and the thumb is going to retain, retain the, the top card by applying a little bit of pressure like that. So what we're essentially doing is we, we'll, we'll be keeping those two cards in the left hand and lift up the rest like this. So what we're doing is we're letting that the top card fall into uh, onto the bottom card and we just keep shuffling. So we're shuffling off like this. So now this is still the bottom card and the, what was previously the top card is now second to, to the last card. And we're going to do this again. So we keep the top and the bottom cards uh, and we lift the rest. This is also referred to as milking the deck. Whoops. As milking the deck. Uh, and then we shuffle off. But we make sure to run the last couple of cards. So we now bring this back to the top. And this uh, is still on the bottom. So again, we milk the cards out of the deck and we shuffle off. Give it a little tap and we milk the deck again and we shuffle off and we make sure to run the last uh, couple of cards. So now we have the Ace of Spades back on top and the Ace of Hearts is on the bottom. We'll now learn how to run cards. And as I said before, running cards is essentially uh, shuffling one card at a time. So you can begin your shuffle like normal and then we shuffle up one card at a time and this will become very important to know later. So the difference is instead of, of having your thumb up here at the, at, at, at the edge of the cards and pulling off packets like this, you will have your thumb on the on the back of the cards like this instead using the pad of your thumb basically to draw off cards individually like this and this is easier with a newer deck uh, with with less fraction if you find it hard you can try to angle it a little bit more so you have a steeper angle and this can sometimes be uh, sometimes make it, make it easier uh, to run the cards. So play around with it. I bet you'll get it down pretty fast. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the injog and the undercut. The injog is very important to know when you do the overhand shuffle. And it says in the book that it's been around and was first published in 1584. So it's been around for quite some time. And the injog is when you're shuffling the deck, you run, you shuffle up a, a couple of times, and then you run one card, and and you you're gonna injog it, which means that the the card will protrude from the back like this. And right now I'm exaggerating grossly, so it's uh, it's not supposed to to protrude this much, but I'm just making the point and when you begin to practice you can have quite a big in jog but this is going to get smaller later on so when you when you start you can do your in jog by moving 
your right hand a little bit towards you and run one card and then move it back and shuffle off. But the best way actually to do the Enjog is to run the card and using this thumb to pull it back a little bit and then shuffle off because it looks a little bit suspicious if you move your hand inwards too much. But I wouldn't worry too much about it because when you do the shuffle, obviously, you're going to talk to your audience and to them, you'll just be shuffling the cards. But yeah, don't make it too obvious, I guess. So again, shuffle off, injog a card and you can start off by, by quite quite a big in jog almost half a card not really but almost yeah and then shuffle off once you've practiced a little bit it's going to be just a very very small in jog like this this is my in jog again here's the in jog you can see it now the uh, the role of the pinky finger the little finger becomes apparent because it controls the in jog so when you shuffle and do the in jog the pinky finger is there to make sure by touch only that the the card is protruding and and you can locate it within you know seconds so it's very important that you practice your open shuffle with your pinky here. Now let's go on to the undercut. So once you've shuffled the cards, you've done your in jog and you're shuffled off. The undercut is simply this. Okay, so let's let's go go through where I did that. So do your in jog, you shuffle off. What you do is you take your right thumb, you apply a little bit of pressure to this edge and you pull it into the deck. And now you have a thumb break. So there's a break between these two packets. And when you're undercutting, you're, you simply keep this, this uh, packets in your left hand and you take the back packet and put it on top. And uh, the different uses of the in jog and the uh, the undercut will be apparent in just a moment. Okay, guys. So now we're con coming into the the real fun stuff. Now we're going to use the overhand shuffle as a control. And what does that mean? Well, in this case, it means that we're keeping control over a selection. So we let a spectator pick a card, return it to the deck, shuffle it but we know exactly where the card is. So there are a big amount of, uh, of controls, but one of the easiest and one of the actually, one of the best and most natural is the overhand shuffle. So once you've watched this video, you'll have a great control that you can start to use today. So this is process. You let a spectator pick a card so let's say they pick this card, it's the Ace of Clubs. And while they, they're looking at the card and maybe showing it to, to the other spectators, you begin to shuffle, shuffle the, the deck. And when you sense that, okay, they've, they've seen it, they've memorized it, they're going to put it back. You simply pause your shuffle. You can tap it like this if you want to, and you extend your hand as an invitation for them to return the card. Uh, let's keep it face up now for clarity. And in the book, they suggest that you now run three cards, three cards, you do an in jog and you shuffle off. And when you do this, shuffle the, the, remaining, the remaining cards a little bit sloppy, a little bit irregular, so that the in jog doesn't uh, become too apparent. And now it's easy to just undercut. And now you know exactly where their card is. It's fourth from the top. 
Uh, and if you want to bring it to the top, you can say something in the lines of, okay, is, is your card somewhere on the top? No. Is it somewhere on the bottom? No. Okay. And now you've brought their selection to the top. Now, I think that they recommend that you run three cards because when, when you're starting out, you might be afraid to do the in jog on their selection because, because their eyes might follow that card. And when you start shuffling, they might notice that you're doing an in jog. And therefore, this is my theory why, why they recommend this. They recommend that you start by running some cards uh, flush on the deck and as you start talking their eyes will you know meet your eyes and um, they won't notice the in jog but you know as you get better at the uh, this this control and the shuffle and the in jog you won't have to to uh, to do those uh, three run running cards you can just do the in jog and shuffle off and then do the undercut as discussed previously. So doing that, it simply means you start your shuffle, you undercut like this, you do your in jog. Obviously you need to do a pretty small in jog in this case so that they don't notice it. And without, of course, any breaks or, or any hesitation, you, you keep shuffling. And you do the undercut. So, yeah, it would look like, like this. Now, in, in the book, the first chapter about the overhand shuffle they they only teach you the undercut and in the second chapter about the overhand shuffle which is coming up they teach you another technique which i think is better but i'm going to teach you that technique now because i think it, it's good to have that in the same video so this is going to be the big <laughs> the big uh, overhand shuffle video so to speak so it starts the same way they have a selection you shuffle the cards uh, they return it and you do either you run your three cards or you just do your in jog straight away and you shuffle off now you once again you do the same same kind of break essentially as you did when you just undercut uh, the deck but instead of undercutting you keep that break and this is once again it's a little bit exaggerated but you can have quite a large break actually, people don't notice, but still a bit smaller than, uh, than this. But what you do now is you simply start <clears throat> another shuffle like this, and you shuffle to the break and throw the rest on top. And now you brought their cards to the top. So instead of a shuffle and an undercut, it's just two shuffles, which I think looks better. So they return the card, you in jog, you shuffle off, you make the break, and you shuffle off again to the break, and you throw the rest on top. So this is what it looks like in yeah full speed, basically. Shuffle, tap, shuffle again, throw the rest on top. So let's do that slow one more time. They have made the selection, you shuffle. You extend your uh, your right hand like this, and you ask them to return the the card. Let's keep it uh, face up for clarity. You either run three cards or you just in jog, and then you shuffle off the rest of the cards. You tap. You make that thumb break in at this end, and then again, you shuffle to that to the break. And you throw the rest on top and now you have their selection on top so this is 
this is a great control. The last thing I want to say is that the cut is not useless. I think this is better than a cut, but you can definitely do the cut in the beginning. But there's a better way of doing it, actually. And this is my preferred series of shuffles and a cut. Because a golden rule is to always cut the cards after the shuffle. So let's do this again. You start the shuffle. They return the selection. You injog a card like I just teached you and you shuffle to the to the break and you throw the rest on top. So you have you, you just brought their card to the top. Now you do another shuffle. So you undercut about half of the deck. You injog the first card and you shuffle off. But instead of just undercapping it like this, like we did before, you let the card drop like this. And then you use your, your right thumb to lift on the in jog, and then you simply do one straight cut to the table like this. Because I think that a cut like this looks a lot more a lot better and more natural than just a cut like this this is not usually how people cut cards right okay so that was quite a lot of information so just practice watch this over and over again and now we're gonna go to the next technique okay so we'll now learn how to control the top stock for example the top four aces the four aces is on top and it looks like looks like this okay so the four races are still on top alternatively it can look like this so we already have all the all the knowledge we need to do this. We've, we've gone through all the moves. So I'm just gonna go through this quickly. I gather the video is quite long by now, so yeah. You have the four cards on top. Now what you're gonna do is you undercut, you injog the first card, and then you shuffle off. And from here on, you do your thumb break and you undercut that to the top. So you bring those cards back to the top. The other slightly better way of doing it is you start the, the, the shuffle, but instead of undercutting it, you just make sure to, within your first shuffle, to shuffle off at least the, the stock. So at least four cards. Then you injure the first card and then you shuffle off. And like before, you uh, form that thumb break and then you shuffle to the break thus bringing those cards back to the top okay guys so this is the last shuffle for today make sure to stay a little bit longer because this is the one of the best shuffles you can learn because it keeps the deck in the exact same order so it's completely false so i've arranged the deck i don't know exactly how new deck order is but it's ace to king with the uh, spades, hearts, clubs, and diamonds. And the shuffle looks like this. So the deck is in the exact same order as before. Now this shuffle is a little bit different than the one from the book because I don't I think this one is better. It's referred to often as the GW Hunter shuffle or at least a variation of it. So here's what you're going to do. You undercut the deck and then you run cards depending on how your how long your usual your usual event shuffle is. But let's say you run 6 cards. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Then, and this is the only new move, so to speak. You drop the cards, but you keep some of the cards in your right hand. 
and you move them back just a little and then you tap. So what you've essentially done is you've in jogged one or a couple of cards and then you make that thumb break again and you undercut and you shuffle off, you shuffle or you run six cards or the same amount of cards. So one, two, three, four, five, six and you drop the remainder of the cards on top. So the cards are in the exact same order. What you've essentially done is you've shuffled six cards and then you've unshuffled six cards. So again, undercut, run six cards, one, two, three, four, five, six, drop and move, move them a little bit towards yourself. So you have a little one or two cards in jog. You form a break, a thumb break, and you undercut again and you shuffle or run six cards, one, two, three, four, five, six, and you drop the rest on top. So that's a completely false shuffle. Okay guys, that's all for today. I don't know how long this video is going to be, it feels like it's quite a long one, but let's kick this channel off with a longer video with all these different variations of the overhand shuffle and the coming videos I'll probably make a little bit shorter so the chapters will be split up in a couple of shorter videos. So next up we're going to do, we're going to learn a couple of tricks with the overhand shuffle and after that we're going to learn the Ripper Shuffle, which is another very useful shuffle. Now, please let me know in the comments what you thought about this. Do you have any suggestions, how I can make it different, how I can make the videos better, more suited for you? Let me know if you think this is a fun idea to go through this book chapter by chapter. And also, if you have su uh, suggestions about the handling, if you like to do some of these these slides in a different way let me know down below and as i said this is my first video so if you happen to stumble upon this video this early on take advantage of it and you know let me know what you want to see and if there's a specific slide or anything that you'd like to see so i can make a video about that and if you have any specific questions about the, the handling and about the slides that we went through today please let me know and finally i don't know when i'm going to post next time so please subscribe that would really help me out and like the video because uh, yeah that would mean a lot and you can also press the bell icon uh, and you'll be notified i think when the next video comes out okay that's all for today. Thank you very much. See you next time. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.